Okay, so this particular lecture is about shape. Um, so we've got these three primary shapes that are at the foundation of character design. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it a little bit already. Uh, it plays into everything. Um, so starting with our, the triangle. You know, we've got associations that we make with these shapes. Um, triangles, dangerous, dynamic, sleek. You may not think that, but we actually do. So here's part of the reason why. Um, so here's our shark, very aerodynamically designed for slicing through water. Um, literally just made out of triangles. He opens that mouth and you miss see teeth shaped just like triangles. Terrifying teeth. Uh, here's our friend the wolf. That's our friend. Uh, well actually dogs are almost they are the dogs are <laughs> um, genetically it's the same as wolves. They descended from wolves. Um, you know, we just selectively bred them. Um, but our wolf here, see how many triangles you, you can find just in the design of this thing. Same thing with this eagle, you know, which is basically a killing machine. Um, you know, think of the bald eagle. Its favorite food is snakes. They they're not afraid of poisonous snakes. They'll just rip them right to shreds with their talons. Um, okay, so here, sports car. I don't know what this is. Is it a Porsche or a Lotus? I don't know. Um, but look at that. It's just, it's built to slice through the air. Um, same thing with this fighter jet. Um, you know, form follows function, and its function is to kill, and it is designed um, to move through the air quickly um, and faster than its enemy. Uh, okay, so squares, mental associations. Firm, strong, slow, stable, kind of unmoving almost. Um, you can check out this guy. Actually, uh, you know, Sperm whale is quite a dangerous predator if you're a squid, but um, you know, you know, kind of a slow-moving hulk, uh, kind of like almost like a big buzz. Here's our giant tortoise. You know, he's just basically nothing but squares in his design. Um, here's our hybrid. Uh, you know, we've got his basic square does shape, but look at all those triangles, of course, his eyes are those big circles. But you know, usually animals will have, you know, predatory animals will have certain, uh, will have certain things. First of all, they'll have eyes that are forward facing, um, to search for prey. Uh, whereas a prey animal will have its eyes on the side to be able to see its predators from any other direction. Um, predators will have sharp teeth. Um, prey animals generally, have, you know, usually tend to eat vegetables, you know. At least if we were thinking about mammals, you know, they still have square grinding teeth. And then there's hybrids like us humans that have both. We have sharp incisors and canines, but we also have, uh, you know, lots of grinding teeth. So it's because we're omnivores. Okay. Uh, okay. So obviously the truck, you know, basically um, associate them with stability. Um, now, circles, soft, approachable, 
This is the first car I believe specifically designed to be marketed to to women. Uh, and notice that it's got all these appealing circles everywhere. Uh, you know. Now this is what a a war machine plane used to look like. Doesn't look very threatening, uh, though. Um, part of the reason it doesn't look very threatening is the way it's designed. It's, um, and here, though, this is a weapon of mass destruction. This is a a bomber that carries nuclear weapons, but you know, um, you know, it's it's design is much more appealing than a fighter jet, but. Really, when we talk about um, characters or animals, I mean, look at this thing. Is there anything more, have you ever seen any more adorable than that? I think this fish is actually very poisonous. <laughs> but just look at that adorable face. Um, anything more adorable than a baby chick? No, of course not. Oh, yeah, there is, you know, human baby. Again, just look at all those soft corners. So the very first day we talked about up, uh, or, or you watch the video where the guy talked about up. Um, here's the dog Doug, very much designed on circles. Here's, I think his name was Alpha, very much the opposite, very much all on triangles, right? Oh, I can't even remember his name, but um, all circles, very lumpy and fleshy. Uh, you know, here, this guy's got like a mixed design. Uh, he's mostly squares and triangles. Um, you know, he was there to dupe us. We're supposed to not think he's a bad guy. Um, this is just like one of the weaknesses of the story. This guy's like the biggest plot hole. I mean, I don't understand because he's almost as old when we see him in the film when when, when this guy <laughs> is just a little kid. So by the time we see him, he must be like 150 years old. Uh, anyways, uh, Carl, all oh, squares, you know, it's already been talked about, but there's circular motifs to his design too. Um, but he is his primary design is squares. Jafar, a villainous character, you know, endlessly broken down into triangles. Uh, again, you gotta remember that none of this stuff is incidental or accidental. I mean, that's this stuff is very intentional, and very well thought out. Um, you know, you can see, like in any of these poses, they're trying to accentuate that aspect of triangularity. Um, you know, Batman, he's a good guy, but he's like the dangerous superhero, you know, he's the one you really don't want to mess with. Um, you know, in certain renditions of him, he's, he's actually uh, more than a little dangerous. He's uh, completely unstable. He likes to beat people up. He actually takes pleasure in it, in like some of the Dark Knight uh, storylines. Uh, these guys, I think this is all from Ponyo, all circles. Um, these are from a kids' video game. These are bad guys, but you know, um, they're 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 made to be non-threatening. So um, they have triangular elements, but their designs are circular, be very appealing. Here, this is from the film Aladdin. Notice that this shape language is built right into them how they are supposed to appear um, and um, you know they you know they, they had style guides that they had to adhere to um, you know to maintain certain aspects of the character's appearances no matter what the pose was going to be uh, again Coraline these characters are all based on shapes look at uh, you know, look at how um, these silhouettes are just amazing. <coughs> um, and, okay, so this is something that we're going to talk about a little bit later, just this week, as a matter of fact. 
um, you know, size and variance uh, in the aspect of design. So here, you know, we've got three equally shaped circles making our boring snowman. Um, you know, what's, what happens when you start taking and you know, doing something more interesting with them, right? Um, that's what I'm going to be encouraging you to do all through uh, the semester is to, you know, try to, you know, to not only break with like your knee jerk, um, you know, knee jerk reactions for creating proportions, which would be this for most people, um, but also uh, to create rhythms with it. And we'll talk about what that means a little bit later on. I told you there's a lot that you need to understand. Um, but basically when you talk about size variance, repetition, uh, you know, these could both be guns. Um, you know, this one is a lot more interesting looking, right? Um, just couldn't think of a better example to bring this to you very quickly. Um, but we are going to get into that a lot more as we go on. And one other thing I'm just going to quickly go over right now. Go to our line lecture. And put this into slideshow mode. All right. So line. This is kind of the basic building blocks of drawing. Um, and it has a lot of important work to do. It defines our shape, builds our structure, clarifies our location, explains the action. I mean, it's doing a lot of work. Um, lines love opposites. Okay, short and long, straights and curves, thick and thin. I'm talking about this a lot, um, and you can see all of that in uh, these characters right here. You know, thick to thin taperings on these arms. Um, you know, a straight side versus a curved side. Just um, you know, on a well-designed character, here you're always going to see those things. So, so um, like here, this is straight leg. You notice how there's things in this other one to break it up and not make it so straight. Straight side here, curved side here. And you see this over and over again in drawing because you see it over and over again in nature. Um, the thick to thin paradigm again, and long and short ones. You know, so. So we have a really long leg, and this is broken up into two short pieces of the leg, right? Um, you know, so the line, line's got a lot of work to do, you know, it's describing our shapes and everything. You know, it's describing everything. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to talk about every single thing here, but, um, you know, every drawing that I'm going to look at, you're going to see... Um, kind of these same things apply, you know, uh, straights and curves, you know, you're going to see opposites, straights, curves, thick to thin, uh, tapering, and, um, oh, I'm having my brain for it here, uh, oh, and short and long, uh, you know, So short lines, you know, they can create texture, they can break up a long line, de-emphasize things, long, emphasize to direct flow. Um, you know, you, you tend to have like long lines when you've got like, you know, uh, things in action. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to redo this lecture. This is that is not clear at all. Um, but straights and curves. Um, you know, this is nature loves straights and curves. 
um, straights, you know, give a sense of hardness. Um, you're firm and immovable. You know, there's usually a straight side to uh, each part of. There's a straight side to each part of your arm. There's a curved side to each part. That that paradigm is all through your body. Um, you know, they're clean and sharp. Um, oh, so here, you know, we got this long line. You know, to take compare these two swords. You know, with this long line. Uh, you know. A straight side and a curved side, but look how much more interesting like this one becomes when you start breaking it up. Um, now you know all things have their purpose and their moment. Um, you know curves, you know they offer softness and pliability, um, but nature loves those opposites. Um, so thick and thin lines, thick, heavy weight, dominance, depth. Thin, soft, lightweight, peripheral. Um, you know, you, as you start drawing more um, throughout the semester, you'll be having to vary up your line thickness. Uh, just to, as a for example, like you know, you want to show weight. You know, you use thicker lines where your character is making contacts, like foot to the ground, sh stuff like that. Um, and that's it for this lecture. Um, all right, you know, we'll talk about all those things. Uh, we'll go through examples and talk about these things in depth as we go into the semester. But these are kind of um, some primary things to uh, take into consideration as we move along. All right, so that's it for this one.